company needs great salespeople. It's one of the most lucrative professions out there. And there's plenty of wisdom and knowledge that's been gathered over the years about selling. We've heard it all, famous quotes from the greatest salespeople of our time, like Zig Ziglar and Jeffrey Gittimer and Dale Carnegie and Jack Welch and many others. Things like, each of us has only 24 hours in a day. It's all about how we use our time. And you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. And then I love this one. People hate to be sold, but they love to buy. There are no traffic jams on the extra mile. Make change before you have to. And the all time classic, put that coffee down. Coffee is for closers. Thousands of pieces of sales advice are readily available in books, videos, on blogs, and in podcasts. And many of these are free of charge. So why would entrepreneurs start a company to train salespeople? And how is it that sharp investors are pouring millions of dollars into this space? Hello everyone and welcome to this CUBE video exclusive. My name is Dave Vellante and today we welcome Paul Fifield, who's the co-founder and CEO of Sales Impact Academy, who's going to answer these questions and share some exciting news on his startup. Paul, welcome to the CUBE. Good to see you again. Yeah, good to see you again, Dave. Great to be here. Hey, so before we get into the hard news, tell us a little bit about Sales Impact Academy, why'd you start the company, maybe some of the fundamentals of this market, your total available yeah. market, who you're targeting, you know, what's the premise behind the company? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, I, I started the company, it was actually pretty organic uh, in the way it began. I had a 10, 10 year uh, uh, career as a, as a CRO. And it was, you know, had a couple of great, uh, great, uh, great hits with two, two companies, but it was a real struggle to basically you know, operate as a, as a CRO and learn your craft at the same time. And, uh, and so when I left my, 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 my last company, I, I kind of got out there. I wanted to kind of give back a little bit. And I started doing some voluntary teaching uh, in and around London. And actually one of the companies I started was in New York. So I got schooled very much on the sort of US approach to how you build a modern, you know, go to market and sales operation. Started going out there doing some teaching, realized that so many people just didn't have a clue about how to build a scalable and predictable revenue function. Uh, and I kind of felt sorry for them. So I literally started doing some, you know, online classes myself, but I, I got my co-founder Alex to put some curriculum together as well. And we literally started uh, just doing online classes, very live, very organic, just a, just a Google Drive and, and, and some, some, some decks. And it really just blew up, blew up from there. That's amazing. I mean, so I you heard my you know tongue in cheek up front, but but why, you know, people might wonder why do you need a platform? Because there's so much free information out there. Is it to organize? Is it to is it the a yeah. discipline thing? Explain that. Well, I think I think the way I sort of see this is that is that is that the lack of structured learning and education is actually one of the greatest educational travesties I think of the last fifty years. Okay. Now, sales and go-to-market is a huge global profession, right? Half the world's companies are B2B. So roughly that's a proxy for half the world's GDP, right? Which is $40 trillion of GDP. Now that $40 trillion rests on kind of the success of the growth and the sales functions of all those companies. Yet in its infinite wisdom, the global education system literally just ignored sales and go-to-market as a profession. Uh, some universities are kind of catching up, but it's really too little, too late. So what I, what I sort of say to people is you, you imagine this Dave, right? You imagine if the way that law worked as a profession, let's say, is that there's no law school, there's no law training, there's no even in work professional, uh, continuous professional development in, in law. The way that it works is you leave university, join a company, start practicing law and just use like YouTube just to maybe like, <laughs> you know, to, where, you, where you're struggling. Uh, just use YouTube to like work out what work out what's going on. The legal profession would be in absolute chaos, and that's what's happened in the sales and go-to-market profession. Okay, what this profession desperately, desperately needs is structured learning, uh, good, good pedagogy, good, well-designed uh, course and, and 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 curriculum. And here's the other thing, right? The, it's the sort of paradox of infinite information is that just because all the information is out there. Right, it doesn't mean it's actually it's a good learning experience. And like, where do you find it? What's good? What's not good? Um, and also, the other thing I'd point out is that there is this kind of myth that all the information is out there on the internet. 
But actually what we do, and we'll come into it in a second, is our, the people teaching on our platform are the elite people from the industry. They haven't got time to do blog posts and, and, and just explain to people how they operate. They're going from company to company, working at like, you know, working at these kind of elite companies. Um, and they're the people that teach. And that information is not, uh, is not really available uh, and freely out there on the internet. Yeah, real opera. You made some great points there. I mean, it's, I think business schools are finally starting to teach a little bit about public speaking and presenting, but nobody's teaching us how to sell. And as Earl Nightingale says, to some degree, we're all salespeople selling our family and living the good life all or, or whatever, what movie we want to see tonight. But okay, let's get to the hard news. You got fresh funding of 22 million. T tell us about that. Congratulations, yeah. you know, who, who the investors, what else can you share with us? Sure. Well, I mean, obviously, you know, immensely proud. We started from very sort of, humble beginnings, as I said. Uh, we've now scaled very rapidly. We're a subscription business, we're, 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 a, we're a SaaS business. Uh, we'll come on to some of the, some of the growth metrics shortly, uh, but just in, in a couple of years, you know, the, la the last financial year, which ended end of January, uh, we grew 500% from, from, from year one. We're now, uh, we're now well over 125 people. And, and I'm very, very, very uh, honored, flattered, humbled, uh, that MIT, um, obviously one of the most prestigious universities in the world, has taken a direct investment via their endowment fund. HubSpot Ventures, another Boston great, uh, has also taken a direct investment as well. Uh, they actually began as a customer uh, and loved what we were doing so much that they then decided to make, a, make an investment. Uh, Stage two capital, um, who, who invested in, in our seed round, pretty much tripled down, played a huge role in helping us assemble MIT and HubSpot Ventures um, as, uh, as investors. And they continue to be an incredible VC, uh, giving us amazing, amazing support. That Their LP network of go-to-market leaders is, is second to none. And then Emerge Education, who is our pre-seed investor, they're actually based in London, um, also joined this round uh, as well. Great, well, let, actually, let's jump ahead. To, let's talk about the metrics. I mean, if stage two's involved and they're hardcore, uh, what, can you, what can you share with us uh, about, you know, everybody's chasing AR and NRR and, and the like, well, <laughs> what can you share with us? They're both, they're, they are both pretty important. Um, well, I think from a, from, a, from a head count perspective, so as I mentioned, our fiscal uh, ends at the end of January uh, each year. Uh, we've gone from 25 to over 125 employees in that time. We've gone from 82 to 260 customers um, uh, also um, in that time. And customers now include HubSpot, Gong, Klaviyo, uh, GitHub, G2, Sixth Sense. So some really sort of major uh, SaaS companies um, in, in the space. Um, our revenue's grown significantly with 5X, so 500% increase in, in revenue year over year. Uh, which is pretty, pretty, pretty fast. Very proud of that. Uh, our learning community has gone from over 3,000 people to, to almost 15,000 uh, professionals. Uh, and that makes us the, the, the comfortably the largest uh, go-to-market learning community um, in the world. How did you discuss, decide when to scale? What were the sort of signals that said to you, okay, we're ready, we have product market fit, we can now scale the, the go-to-market? What, what, what were the signals there, yeah. Paul? Well, I mean, I think for a very small team to achieve that level of growth um, in customers, um, to, to, be, uh, to be kind of honest with you, like it's the pull that we're getting from the market. And I think the thing that has surprised me the most perhaps in, in the last 12 months is the pull we're getting from the from the from the enterprise? Uh, we're, we're you know I can't really announce. We've actually got a huge pilot uh, with one of the largest companies actually in the world, uh, which is going fantastically well. Uh, our pipeline for enterprise customers is absolutely huge. But as you can you can imagine, if you've got distributed teams all over the world, living we're living and working in this kind of hybrid world, how on earth do you kind of upskill all those people, right? That are, that, like I say, that are so distributed, it's impossible. Like in work, in, in the office, delivery of uh, training um, is pretty much dead, right? Um, and so we, 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 we sort of fill this really big pain. We solve this really, really big pain of how to, how to effectively upskill people through this kind of live curriculum and, and, and this live teaching approach that, that we have. So I think for me, it's the pull that we're getting from the market 
uh, really meant that we, we, you know, we have to double down. There is such a massive TAM. It is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I think there are, there are 20 million people just in sales and go to market in tech alone, right? And I mentioned to you earlier, half the world's companies effectively, uh, you know, are B2B and therefore represent, um, you know, at, at its largest scope, um, our TAM. Excellent, thank you for that. So, uh, tell, tell us more about the product and the platform. How does it work? If I'm a customer, what type of investment do, do I have to make both financially and what's my time commitment? How do you structure that? Yeah. So the, 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 the model is basically on a, on a seat model. So roughly speaking, um, every seat's about $1,000 per year per, per rep. Um, the, the, the lift is, is, is light. So we've got a very low onboarding. It's not a very, it's not a very, it's not a highly complex technical product, right? Uh, we've got a vast uh, curriculum of learning that covers learning for, you know, SDRs and AEs and CS reps and, and leadership and management, management training. Uh, we're developing curriculum for, for pre, for, for technical pre-sales. Um, we're, we're developing curriculum for, for revenue operations. And so it's a very, very simple, we, but we basically, um, we basically, uh, it's a seat, seat model. Uh, people literally just, just um, send, send us the, the seats and the details. Uh, we get people up and running in, in the platform. They start then enrolling and we have a customer success team that then plots out learning journeys and learning pathways for all of our customers. And actually what's starting to happen now, which is very, very exciting is that, you know, we're actually be, we're actually a key part of people's career development pathway. So to go from, you know, SDR one, let's say to SDR two, you have to complete these three courses with Sales Impact Academy, and let's say get 75% in, 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 in your exam. And it becomes a very powerful and simple way of developing career pathway. Yeah, so really detailed curriculum. Do, so I was going to say, do I, as a, as, a, as a sales professional, do I pick and choose the things that are most relevant for me? Or are people actually going through a journey in, in career progression yeah. or maybe both? Yeah, it's a, it's a, mixture, it's a mixture of both. Um, we tend to see now, we're, we're sort of starting to standardize, but really we're de developing enough curriculum that over, a, let's say a 15 year period, uh, you could start with us as an, as an SDR and then end as a chief revenue officer, you know, running, running the entire function. You know, we have, th th this is the other thing about the crazy world of, of go to market. Very often people are put into roles and it's sink or swim. There's no real learning that happens. There's no real development that happens before people take these big, these, these big steps. And what this platform does so beautifully is, is it equips people with the right skills and knowledge before they take that that next step in in, in their profession and, and in their career, and it just dramatically improves uh, their their chances of succeeding. Who are the trainers? The, who's leading the classes? How do you find these guys? How do you structure? What are the content you know vectors? Where, where's all that come from? Yeah, so the the sort of secret source of what we do beyond just the the, the live instruction, uh, beyond the significant amount of peer to peer learning that that, that goes on. Um, is that we go and source the absolute most elite people and go to market to teach, okay? Now I mentioned to you before, you've got these people that are going from like job to job uh, at the very like, that the sort of peak of their careers working for these incredible companies. It's that knowledge that we want to get access to, right? And so we, Stage 2 Capital is an incredible resource. Uh, the interesting thing about Stage 2 Capital is, you, as you well know, Dave, um, you know, run by Mark Roberge, who, who was on when, when we spoke uh, last year, uh, and also J Jay Poe, is all the LPs of Stage 2 Capital uh, represent three to 400 of the most elite go-to-market professionals in, in the world. So, you know, about seven or eight of those are now on an advisory board. And so we have access to this incredible pool of talent. And so we know uh, by consulting these, these, these amazing people, who are the best people in, in certain aspects of go-to-market? Uh, we reach out to them, uh, and very often they're, 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 you know, they're, they're at a stage in their career where they're really kind of willing to give back. Of course, there are commercials around it as well, uh, and there's lots of other benefits that we provide our teaching, our teachers and our faculty and our what we call our coaches. Uh, but yeah, we source the very, very best uh, people in the, in the world to teach. 
Now, how does it work as a, as a user of your service? Is it all on demand? Do you do live content or a combination? Yeah, look, the, 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 the big, one of the big differentiators is this is a live delivery of learning, okay? Most learning online is typically done on demand, uh, self-directed, and there's a ton of research. There's a, there's a great blog post on, on Andreessen's site um, uh, a short, short time ago, which was, which was talking about how the completion rates of on-demand learning are somewhere between 3 and 6%. Wow. That's like that's awful. <laughs> it's like why, 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 why bother? Uh, however, we're seeing through that live instruction. So we teach two one-hour classes a week. That's it. We're 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 upskilling very busy people. They're stressed. They've got targets. So we have to be very very cognizant of that. So we teach two one-hour classes a week. Typically, you know, Monday and a Wednesday or a Tuesday and a Thursday. And that pace of learning is about right. It's kind of how humans learn as well you know, short bursts of, 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 of information and then put that learning and those skills that you've acquired in class literally to work minutes after the class finishes. Uh, and so through that, and it sits in your calendar like a meeting, it doesn't feel overwhelming, you're learning together as a team as well. And all that combined, we, we see completion rates often in excess of 80% for our, for our courses. Okay, so they block that time out. They, and, and it's, in the, it's in the calendar. And they yeah. make, they're making so the investment. Say, Go ahead, please. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sorry, Dave. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So like, you know, we have course lengths. Uh, so one of our, our shorter courses are, are like four hours long over two weeks. And again, it's just literally in the calendar. We also teach uh, uh, what we call the magic learning hour. And the magic learning hour is this one specific hour in the day um, that enables teams all over the Western hemisphere to join the same class. And that, that magic learning hour it's eight o'clock Pacific, 11 o'clock Eastern, 4 p.m. over in the UK, and 5 p.m. in the rest of Europe. And that one time in the, in the day means that these enterprises have got teams all over the Western Hemisphere joining that class, learning together as a team, plus it's in the calendar. And it's that approach that, 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 what, that, that approach uh, uh, is is why we're we're seeing such such, such high engagement and completion. That's very cool. The 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 time zone thing. Now now, who's the target buyer? Are you selling only to sales teams? Can, can I, as an individual, purchase your service? Yeah, that's a good that's a good question. Currently, it's a very much like a, a B two B uh, motion. Um, as I mentioned earlier on, we're, we're getting an enormous pull from the enterprise, which is very exciting. Um, you know, we have an enterprise se uh, segment. Uh, we have a, a, a sort of more of a startup earlier stage uh, segment. And then we have a, a mid-market uh, segment that we call our sort of strategic. And that's typically uh, most of these like venture-backed, fast growth um, tech uh, companies. Um, so very, very much at the moment, a bit of B2B motion. Uh, we're launching our own technology platform um, uh, in, in, the, in the early summer. And then later on this year, we're going to be adding uh, what's called PLG or a product-led growth. So individuals uh, can actually sign up uh, to, uh, to SIA. Yeah, I mean, you said, I think you said $1,000 per year per, per rep. Is that right? I mean, that's, yeah. that's, that's a small investment for an individual that wants to be part of you know, this community and, and, and grow his or her career. So is that, that's the growth plan? You go, go down market, I would imagine. You talked about the Western hemisphere, there's international opportunities maybe, local language, what's the growth plan? Yeah, I mean, look, we're, we've identified the magic learning hour for the Middle East and APAC, uh, which is eight o'clock in the morning in Istanbul, right? <laughs> Uh, is 5 p.m. in Auckland. Uh, it's quite fun trying to work out like what this optimum uh, magic learning hour is. But that is what's incredible is we teach in that, at that time, and that opens up the whole of the Middle East and the whole of APAC, right, right out to Australia. And so once we're teaching the curriculum in those two slots, that means literally you can have teams in any country in the world. I think apart from Hawaii, and um, you can actually access our live learning product in, in work time. And that's incredibly powerful. So we have so many like axes of, of, of growth. We've got single users, as I, as I mentioned, but really Dave, that's single users that we will be winning from the enterprise and that will represent 
pipeline that we could then potentially convert um, as, as well. And look, you, you make a very good point. You know, we've seen what students are now leaving university with over $100,000 in debt. We've got a massive, massive debt problem uh, here in the, in the US with, stu with student debt. You could absolutely uh, sign up to our platform at let's say 100 bucks a month, right? And probably within six months, gain enough knowledge and skill to walk into a $60,000 a year base salary job as an S as an SDR. That's a huge, that's a huge entry entry level uh, salary. And you could do that without even going to university. So there could be a time here where we become a really viable alternative um, to actually even going to university. I love it, the cost of education go to the roof. It's out of reach for so many people. Paul, congratulations on the progress. The fresh funding, great to have you back on theCUBE. We'd love to have you back and follow your ascendancy. I think great things ahead for you guys. Thank you very much, Dave. All right, and thank you for watching. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE. We'll see you next time.